you lost your job, you lost this, you lost that. Take it in your stride. Alhamdulillah, you'll have a happier home. You'll have a happier family. People are stressed. You know what? They can't show that stress to the people they work with because they're big guys there. They want to impress the girls at work. So they don't show them any bad habits, nothing. But you go home, first thing, you start swearing, you start screaming, you start shouting, you start showing your real self. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. That's why the Prophet ﷺ says, you know who's the best person? The one who's best to his family members. Always the best. Do you know why? That person has shown the family that when I'm upset, I'm still a good guy. When I'm angry, I'm still a good guy. When I'm hungry, I'm still a good guy. When I've suffered a bad day, I'm still a good guy. When I've suffered a loss, I'm still a good guy. And I'm always a good guy. Then you're really a good guy. Subhanallah. But if you're a good guy outside the home and when you come back home, then you're not a good guy at all. Who knows better what type of a person you are? Those at home. So that's the reason why the Prophet ﷺ tells us, watch who you are. You want to really know who a man is, go ask his wife. You want to really know who a woman is, ask the husband. Or ask the family members. If they're honest enough, they'll tell you the truth. May Allah protect us. Be honest. Be upright. You lose a deal because of your honesty. No problem. Allah will give you barakah. Barakah in it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us barakah. The meaning of barakah is blessings in simple English. You achieve blessings. What's the meaning of blessings? You have that contentment within you. You are delighted with the little that Allah has given you because so much has been achieved with that little Allah gave you rather than having the millions and the billions and you can't even see your left from your right. You're not even happy. You don't even know pillar to post. Blessings are snatched away when sins are committed. Remember that. You have the best spouse, the best person Allah chose for you as a husband or as a wife. You cannot see it because you know what? You're involved in other sins. So you're blinded. Blinded by whom? By shaitan. Your home is no longer happy because your relationship with Allah is weak. Your relationship with shaitan has become strong. Your relationship with shaitan becomes strong. You become blind. What happens to the blindness? The best wife on earth. I don't want to say, but perhaps I should. Should I? People would die to be married to your wife. And you're still alive. May Allah grant us ease. Do you understand what I mean? People would say, how lucky is this guy? Wow. The, the sisters will say, this guy's got a really good husband, uh, wife. And you know what? We can't see that. We're blinded because there's some sin happening. Either there's haram income there. Either there's haram relationships there, either there's haram food there, either there's something wrong happening there, either there's no salah, there's no connection with Allah. So the coolness of the eyes will not be achieved because the heat of the sin has overtaken that coolness. This is why I started off by saying point number one, develop your relationship with Allah. People think, ah, oh, but that point, you know, everyone just talks about it. I'm being honest. The owner of the solution is Allah. People across the globe, I've had the opportunity of communicating and interacting with some non-Muslims who are very, very famous on earth. And they have told me, we have no contentment. We're looking for happiness. You know what keeps them ticking, clicking, some of them? The drugs, the alcohol, the intoxicants, the dirty life, the attention, etc. Not at all. A true believer knows that that is very temporary and very fake. It has a heat to it that would add to the flame rather than extinguish it. So, be calm. Concentrate on what Allah has given you. You have a job. Cherish it. Work hard. The money you've earned, when it is really earned, you'll have a happy family. You know why? Many of us, we have a job, supposed to work from what time to what time here? Approximately 9 to? 9 to 5, mashallah, you're lucky. With us it's 8 to 5. Okay? You guys have one hour knocked off. I think it's called Greenwich Mean Time, right? Okay, so you have one hour less, 9 to 5. And you have an hour for lunch, I guess, right? Lunch and salah, I hope, okay? Or is it salah and lunch? Either way, so long as the salah is there. But you get to work at, maybe, maybe you're a good guy, you get to work at 8. And then you're on your phone up to quarter past 8. And then when the boss walks out, you're playing your video games. And you're clocking it one after the other. And then when the guy comes back, you're ducking and diving. Before it used to be newspapers. Nowadays, there's no newspapers. You know why? Technology is taken over and we're doing everything. Subhanallah. And you know what? You're stealing from your boss's time. Are you allowed to do this? 
No. If you, if you are allowed, some bosses say, look, I give you some time to play video games. Anyone from amongst us who's a boss who allows that? <laughs> Mashallah! There's a brother who put his hand up. I think he must be uh, enjoying playing the game. You need someone to play with, right? <laughs> May Allah grant us ease. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. So, to be very honest, that money, that income that came to you, technically you might think I worked for it and I earned it. But you know what? There will be some lack of some blessing because something went wrong within it that was not meant to be. You've actually stolen a portion of it. I know it might sound a bit hard, but it's a fact. Islam teaches us to look into even that much. Subhanallah. Even that much. You pinched from someone. You were not honest. You went to work. Work properly. Work hard. You know, when you've earned that money through your own sweat, trust me, you will realize its value, number one. Number two, Allah will allow you to have the bargains that are available in a way that you didn't imagine. I earned a thousand pounds and I bought goods that lasted me so long, there was another guy who spent 10,000 pounds on something similar and it was depleted before he knew. But Allah blessed me. May Allah grant us that blessing. How many of us, we earn a little, but end of the week, end of the month, we still have change. And how many of us earn a lot? End of the week, there's no more money left. You're oiling something haram. Check it out. There is something happening in the system that needs cleaning a little bit. And this is why we say, my brothers and sisters, something a lot of us don't talk about is the purification of the heart. You want true happiness, purify your heart. Look at your brother with love. Look at your sister with, mashallah, the genuine look. You don't want to attack and harm and hurt and hate everyone on earth. For what? These are your brothers and sisters, like it or not, subhanallah. They are your brothers and sisters. When someone is down, don't slap them further down. Think of how can I empower this person? How can I bring them up again? You bring someone up, Allah will bring you even higher, subhanallah. You want the help of Allah, help another person. Allah will help you. You want wealth, give something to someone. See how Allah returns it to you tenfold. He promises that to you. The problem is we can't part. We cannot part with a small amount of money. We cannot part with it. You know why? It's mine. That's why Allah says, Zakah is charity. If he wanted, he would have taken it without it coming to you. But Allah says, I'm going to give you a hundred. I just want to see if you can give me two pound fifty back. Change. I want to see it. Are you going to do it? A lot of us just keep the hundred in the pocket. That's it. Done. Zakah, yeah, I owe. I know. I owe. Somewhere. Work it out. Okay, I will. I will. No. Stop everything. Look at how sometimes people have a little bit of gold. Sometimes they have a little bit of savings. And they say, you know what? My money is all caught up. Even in a building. Even in something else. My money is caught up. How can I pay the zakat? And I always say, when you have a hundred dollar bill, or in this case, in this country, a fifty pound bill, you are going to need to break it to take out that two and a half or one seventy five. You are going to need to break it anyway. So you will still have those few tens, maybe two twenties and a little bit of change. You will have. People say, but I don't want to break it. Uh -uh. Your heart should not be connected to the dunya to the degree that it compromises your akhirah because then you will lose the dunya as well. That dua, the Prophet ﷺ tells us, in fact, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, there are people who call out to Allah saying, oh our Lord, grant us goodness in this dunya, in this world, give us goodness and give us goodness in the hereafter as well. Which means the two are connected. If Allah grants you that dua, what were you going to have? Goodness in this world, goodness in the hereafter. Allah's never ever kept true success in how much you have materially. That's why when we are married and we want a happy home, never put pressure on your spouse regarding material items. Even if it's your own money, don't waste money beyond your proper capacity. Learn to adjust, to budget to downsize, to downgrade, to prioritize when you're married, within the marriage, even if that's your own money. Learn to prioritize because you know what? The ability to spend in the correct manner for the correct things according to the right amount and to budget properly is already half of success. It's half of success. You know how to spend. You know how to draw the... the or strike the balance between your income and expenditure. That's half of success. No need to borrow. No need to go and get unnecessary. You know, to indebt yourself unnecessary. That's, there's no need for that. 
If it's something necessary, it's another thing. 